Hey guys, my name is Stan and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I want to talk about my experiences with using hard metal tubing, such as this right here, and my thoughts about uh, cutting and bending hard metal tubing. And um, if you've already seen the title and thumbnail, you know that this is going to be a two part video where this one's going to be focused in a little bit more on what not to do and um, you know things to be aware of when bending tubing. So let's get into it. So I've been building water cooled computers for over a decade now and I've done everything from uh, flex hoses to hard rigid tubing, either acrylic or PETG. I've even done glass tubing for some of my builds like the one that you got to see behind me here. And uh, the only thing I really haven't really played around with is metal tubing. And that's primarily because metal tubing is one, difficult to work with, and two, requires a lot of upfront costs to be able to manipulate it well. So for example, the uh, tube bender that you will need is expensive, and the tubes themselves, up until recently, are very difficult to get. So for example, um, you would have to buy stainless steel tubing from eBay or somewhere else and at 12 millimeters It's very difficult to find in the United States. However um, In the last few years here you actually can buy specialized well, It's not really that special but tubing directly from water cooling manufacturers such as what I've got right here so this is a 500 millimeter long uh, black sparkle 12 millimeter diameter tubing from Bits Power. And uh, Bits Power produces them, Alpha Cool also does, and along with a few other manufacturers, uh, you can buy these metal tubes uh, from them directly. So they're mainly made from brass, so blast, brass with uh, nickel plating on them and, and whatever, so they look pretty good. What I've got here are two different colors. I've got Shining Silver, and black sparkle. So these are both from Bits Power and they're both in 12 millimeter OD diameters. However, I have found that they are substantially more difficult or I've ran into some issues while working with this and I kind of wanted to talk about my issues and my thoughts. That way you guys don't run into the same issues or can learn from my mistakes here. Like I said, I bought both black sparkle and shiny silver 12 millimeter diameter tubing from Bits Power. And they're supposedly the same spec, meaning uh, 12 millimeter OD, 0 0.7 millimeter uh, wall thickness. However, the tubes that I received are dramatically different. And what do I mean by that? The shining silver tube wall thickness is about half a millimeter, while the black sparkle one is almost about a millimeter thick and the weight of the tubes are very different. For example, uh, the Black Sparkle version is almost twice as heavy as the Shiny Silver, and just from the way they hit the table, you can hear it, the difference. And, and just the way they bounce, so clearly they're very, very different. And because of the difference, uh, first off, off, the Shining Silver is very difficult to work with, for example, the most basic thing you need to do when working with metal tubing is to be able to cut. So I've got right here, this is a little tube cutter from Rigid. You can buy it from Amazon or um, and some other brands. You know, they're basically very simple. With a sharp blade and some rollers here, what you do is you put the tubing right in, be in between the rollers, start tightening down until you make contact, and then start turning the tube and tightening um, the screw or the threads to continue scoring until it cuts all the way through. However, with the shiny silver, the walls are so thin on this thing that uh, as I was tightening the tube, I actually ended up crushing it on my very first try here, as you can see. And uh, I completely deformed this tube so that this is unusable. Now I did manage to make another cut right here that was successful, but uh, you have to put very, very little pressure or else you're going to end up crushing the Shining Silver tube right here. The Black Sparkle, on the other hand, uh, worked exactly as you would expect. Just you know, good amount of force, turn, 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 and it cuts. So just 
and, and there was no de deformation in the tube. So just from, um, you know, just from this experience alone right here, you can see that uh, it depends, depending on the tube that you get or the properties that you get, uh, cutting can be either pain in the butt or, you know, could be pretty easy. Next, I wanna talk about bending tubing. And bending tubing is actually a very complicated, very difficult thing to do, uh, especially with the different types of tubes. Now, if you've got a chrome plated tube, uh, the chrome plating will either flake if you bend it too much or it'll be too stiff and you'll end up breaking the tube if in, on, in some cases. This right here, this is a brass tube with nickel plating. And this tube can be bent. Um, and I know that it can be bent because there's people who've done it successfully. For example, Ben over at Mods by Ben, he does very, very good bends and uh, very amazing builds. I'll make sure to link in the description down below for you guys to check out. But his builds are absolutely beautiful. And they, he uses some of these tubes along with other types of tubes in his build. So I know it can be done. However, this tool is not the appropriate tool for these tubes right here. And, and what do I mean by that? This is a rigid 412, which is a 400 series 12 millimeter uh, tube bender. This has a radius of 38 millimeters. And unfortunately, uh, this was kind of made for copper tubing or stainless steel tubing. And unfortunately, and I can show you what, what happens when you try is if you got the tube right here and you got the tube bender, you slot it into place. And on most tube benders, you've got a lock where you lock it in and it's got something to lever against, right? And from here, you can start pulling this down. So you start from the zero and you start pulling this down and it's supposed to make a nice round bend. And you can see here, it is bending a little bit. However, because the radius is too sharp, what ends up happening with this is that you actually end up crushing this tube. And, and, and here's what I mean. You can see here, I have made this bend. However, because of the strength or the lack of strength actually uh, in this tube, I have flattened out this right here and I have ended up crushing or started folding in on the inside right here. And this unfortunately just doesn't look very good and the plating starts to wrinkle a little bit. You got a little bit of that texturing on the, on, on the, on the, on the plating. So, you know, you got shiny, 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 but then you got a little bit of wrinkling right here. So this unfortunately just doesn't look that good. And the black sparkle actually fares a little bit better than the shiny silver. The shiny silver just completely crumples in because the wall thickness just doesn't have enough strength. So, um, and this is primarily again, because the radius of this is too tight. Uh, ben has a specific tube bender, which is, I think, from KBS, uh, Rolo Bend. His radius is almost two and a half inches uh, in diameter, or, or, or actually radius, I, I, don't, I don't know how it's measured, but this is 38 millimeters. His is two and a half inches, so it's got a bigger disc, and the radius ends up being a lot more gentle so that you don't get that crushing effect. Now, the last thing I want to try, and I have actually no idea if this works or not, is to try to pack the tube with some sand here. Um, I have seen some, some people try to bend tubes here by packing some sand in to try to keep it more rigid. Uh, again, I have no idea if this will work, but uh, you know what? I'm, at this point, I'm willing to give it a shot. Now, this isn't any special sand. This is just general purpose sand that I picked up over at my local Lowe's or Home Depot. All right, check this out. I've got the sand completely packed in there now, uh, plugged up with the supplied rubber caps. And I'm gonna try to cap that. Honestly, I have no idea what to expect. So maybe, maybe it's gonna shoot off this cap. I don't even know. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's much stiffer. I 
did get a 90, look at this, check this out. It was able to get a 90 degree bend. You can see here, I got just a little bit of flattening going, was still going on at the top. And then a little bit of wrinkling right at the bottom here. Um, this is clearly much better than uh, without the sand. And, and you can see it, it's flattened. It's got a lot, lot thinner. So if you, this is the two thickness and then you can see I got quite a bit thinner right in the middle of the bend there. So unfortunately, this is just not good enough to use in my opinion. This is this, this 38 millimeters is just way too thin of a, or way too sharp of a radius. If I pull it back a little bit and then and then rather than trying to do that very sharp turn if I pull it away and try to bend it a little bit get a little bit better result um, you know, it crushes the blade or the tube less but that's primarily because I'm going with less of an angle or less of a sharp radius turn here it's a little bit more um, it, it's a bigger radius but you can still see here I get that wrinkling effect right there. You see that? So um, I don't think this is usable. Uh, I'm gonna end this as part one here. In the next video, I don't know when this will come out, but I actually ordered some stainless steel tubing on eBay. And this tool right here is designed to bend stainless steel tubing. Uh, it's got a different type of strength it shouldn't be crushing as easily so i have very high hopes of stainless steel tubing um, so i'll make that part two whenever i get my hands on that tubing if you want to see that make sure to subscribe if you learn something um, the like button never hurts anyway my name is stan i'll see you guys in the next one